what is unrecognized foreign currency firm commitments? So a lot of words, let's go ahead and break it down. First of all, if you're familiar with purchase commitment under US GAAP, basically it's the same thing. It's a purchase commitment. So what is a purchase commitment? So if you understand what a purchase commitment is, you'll be able to understand what a firm commitment is. A purchase commitment is when the firm, when the company commitment has a commitment to acquire, to buy goods or services from a supplier or sells goods or services for a specific fixed price. So basically what you did, you signed the contract and you cannot get out of this contract. You are boxed in. Okay, either you are buying something at a fixed price or you are selling something at a fixed price. This is what a commitment is. Now, for our, for this for this purpose, for the purpose of this lecture, we are dealing with foreign currency commitment. Now you sold something, you're going to be receiving that money, that money in a foreign currency. You sold something or you bought something and you have to pay money in a foreign currency. So you have unrecognized foreign currency. Why is it unrecognized? What do you mean by it's unrecognized? It means you, there's no assets or liability on the books. All what you did is you sign the contract. That's all what you did. And now you have to protect that signature because that signature would require you to either pay in a foreign currency or receive a foreign currency which you have to which you have to translate so you are hedging your commitment you're hedging your signature because you cannot technically in theory you cannot get out of this contract therefore protect your exposure but you don't have an asset and you don't have a liability you don't have a receivable and you don't have a payable before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. It's a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So the best way to illustrate this as, as always, but all the other hedging example, all with the other hedging concepts is to work an example. Assume now it's December 1st, year one, and Axiom Co. received and accepted an order from a Spanish customer to deliver goods on March 1st at a price of 1 million euros. So we signed a contract and we said, we commit to deliver goods to that company and they're gonna pay us $1 million uh, March 1st. We signed the contract December 1st. We don't have to deliver anything till March. In March, this is when we receive the money. Assuming further, under the terms of the agreement, we will ship the goods on March 1st and we will receive the payment immediately. Okay, so here nothing happened December 1st except that we agreed to deliver the goods. But at the same time, we know once we deliver the goods, we're going to have we're, money will be waiting for us in a foreign currency. What are we going to do with that money? Okay, now notice the sale will not, not take place till March, but we made a firm commitment. We signed, we put our name on the line. Now we have to protect that. Assuming here we cannot get out of it. Okay, this, th this scenario creates a euro asset exposure to foreign currency exchange risk as of December 1st. As of December 1st, the company now is exposed, exposed to the fluctuation in the euros. Okay, so on this date, we want to hedge. On December 1st, X Exim Co. wants to hedge against an adverse change in the value of the euro over the next three months. This is known as hedge of a foreign currency firm commitment. So notice, we did not make a sale, we did not buy anything, we just made a commitment. And that commitment created an exposure. And that exposure is basically called the firm commitment and we need to protect that firm commitment. This is what we're doing here. So for the sake of illustration, we're gonna be using the fair value hedge to illustrate this scenario. So under the fair value hedge, hopefully you would remember from the prior recording, if you did watch them, the gain or the loss of the hedging instrument is recognized in net income. And the gain or the loss and the change in the fair value of the firm commitment is also recognized in net income. So everything goes into net income, okay? So this accounting treatment would require that you measure the fair value of the firm commitment. So you have a firm commitment and you're going to keep in track of that firm commitment. Track means up or down. Recognizing the change in the fair value and net income. As always, fair value goes into net income. That's another thing that hopefully now it's drilled into your head. And reporting firm commitment on the balance sheet as an asset or a liability, depending on the firm commitment is an asset, whether it's an asset or whether it's a liability, depending on what happened to the currency. 
This raises the conceptual question of how we are tracking the fair value of the firm commitment. Because think about it. We have a firm commitment. Well, we have to look at the foreign currency. Which foreign currency are we looking at? Do we look at the spot rate or do we look at the forward rate? And guess what? Both of them, they're acceptable. So you could look at the spot rate to find the changes in your firm commitment, or you could look at the forward rate to find the changes in your firm commitment. Now, if you don't know what the spot rate or the forward rate is, go to this chapter, the first lecture. I explain what's the spot rate versus the versus the forward rate. So, so to hedge the position, Eximco decided to enter into a forward contract. So we're going to be using a forward contract. This is the hedging instrument because we can use a contract or we could use an option. In the next session, I'm going to tell you we're going to use an option. Okay, so now we're going to be using a forward contract. Now, if you don't know the difference between forward and option, you have to go to the prior session and, you know, learn the difference. On December 1st, the three-month forward rate is 1.485. So we bought a forward contract. So once we receive the euros, we can sell them at 1.485. Okay, so we can get 1,485,000 US dollar from this from this transaction. It doesn't matter what the rate of the euro is on that date. No cash change on December 1st. All what we did is we bought this, con we made a commitment to buy this contract and there's really no cost for this. Okay, and we elected to use the fair value method of the firm commitment through changes in the forward rate. So we're gonna go with the fair value, not cash flow, and we're gonna be using the forward rate as we go through this example. So we're gonna be using the forward rate to measure the changes in the firm commitment and to measure the changes in our gains and losses. Now, what I suggest you do, copy this information down or take a picture of it because the journal entries will be based on this. And I suggest you also create T accounts for all the accounts we're gonna be using to see how we open them, how we close them, what happened to them from year to year. I'm gonna show you the journal entries and explain the journal entries, but the best way to the best way to uh, to really learn this is to see how what's happening to the journal entries, what's happening to each account, okay? What's happening to the gains, what's happening to the losses from year to year, what's happening to the asset, what's happening to the liability from year to year. So here we go, 1231 year one, the forward rate 1.458, this is where we enter into the commitment. The fair value of the hedge is nothing because it's the same as the spot rate, there's nothing on 12 one, 2001 or year one. 1231, the forward rate 1.496. We made a mistake. If we waited to buy this contract on 1231, we could have get 1.496. So notice we 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 purchased this forward rate a little bit prematurely. What happened to the to this contract? Well, it, it worked against us. We had the fair value went down 10,783. Now, how did they here they show you how you came up with that? So really you would have received 1,496 if you waited to enter into this contract December 1st, but we don't want to take that chance. We wanted to enter, we wanted to enter this contract as of December, December 1st. Therefore, we kind of lost $11,000. However, using the time value of money, if we discount the $11,000, our losses are 10,783 based on the present value factor of 12%. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, the amount is the same as the fair value of the forward contract, but with the opposite sign. So every time, we, now, if, if, the, if, if the currency worked against us, the commitment would work for us. If the foreign currency, uh, the forward rate worked with us, the firm commitment will work against us. So the forward rate and the firm commitment, they work in the opposite way, just like all the other hedges. If your asset goes down, if your receivable goes down, you have a loss on the receivable, you're going to have gain on the hedge. If the receivable goes up, you're going to have a loss on the hedge. So they work the opposite way. So notice here we have a loss, a loss on the hedged instrument. Oh, no, I'm sorry. But yeah, on the hedge instrument, on, on the contract. Okay. By December 1st, year one, the spot rate was 1.48, which is good for us because we can get 1.485. It means we're going to get a $5,000 gain. And what happened to the value of the uh, the value of the forward contract went from negative went from negative ten thousand seven eighty three to positive fifteen thousand fifteen thousand seven eighty three. Okay, so the value went from negative to positive. So we have a gain. Why? Because the spot rate was lower than our commitment. So we did good. We did good. Why? Because we locked our price at one point four eight five. So let's look at the journal entries and see what happened from year to year. What journal entries do we make? 
So let's take a look at the journal entries. First, on December 1st, there is no entry, no entry to record as either the sale agreement or the forward contract or, or both are both executory contract. Nothing really changed hand at, at this point, okay? So just we'll have a memorandum saying this is a forward contract. Remember, we have to document if we are doing hedge accounting, we have to explain why it's hedging, what type of hedging, so on and so forth. Then on December 31st, remember what happened on December 31st? We did not wait. We signed the contract a little bit prematurely. We have a loss of 10783 Remember, it's an $11,000 loss, but we have to discount it. So the loss is 10783 Now remember, the loss on the contract is offset by a firm commitment because a loss on the contract, it means we did good on the firm commitment, okay? So it's offset by a gain. So a loss is offset by a gain. Therefore, we're gonna have a liability and an asset. Nothing really overall, if you really look at things, we have a gain, we have a loss, net income is zero. We we have an asset called firm commitment and we have a forward contract, which is a liability. So basically nothing really happened. Everything canceled each other out, but it's very important that you keep track of your assets and your liabilities. The gains and the losses, they're gonna be closed out, but the assets and the liabilities will be with you from year to year. So keep that in mind. So the nature of the asset, nature of the liability. So net income is zero, you have a liability and you have an asset, okay? now. Now it's we're going to be looking at the transaction that takes that takes place on March 1st. What happened on March 1st? Remember, March 1st, you 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 deliver the product and they're going to pay you a million euros on that day. Okay? And remember, this is the data. I should have keep bringing this data every time I'm working these examples, but that's fine. Remember this. So remember on March 1st, the forward contract works for you. Why? Because the spot rate is dollar 48. And you can sell your euro for 1.485. So immediately you have a gain. And the change in the fair value of the contract is 15,783. So you went from a loss of 10,783 year one to a gain of 15,783. Okay, let's take a look at what happened. So you debit the forward contract, 15,783, and you book a gain of 15,783. Then to, this is to adjust the fair value of the contract from the 10,783 to 5,000 because now you are at a gain of 5,000 to go from uh, to go from uh, 10,000 loss, 10,783 loss to 5,000 gain. You have to move 15,783 to the right, basically. So simply put on a timeline, if this is zero, you are standing right here, negative 10,783, and you have to move to positive. 5,000, so you have to move 15,783. If you're gonna look at it from a uh, from a uh, from a timeline perspective, now remember you have a gain that you're gonna have a loss. Now you have a loss on the on the firm commitment. You have a loss because it works the opposite of the contract, and your loss is the loss is a gain is the amount of the gain 15,783, and you credit the firm commitment. Now keep track of the forward contract and the firm commitment remember you're going to have you're going to have 5000 5000 of uh the firm commitment it's going to be a credit of 5000 and the forward contract the liability is a debit of 5000 hopefully you are keeping track of those journal entries then you receive the foreign currency you receive the foreign currency it's 1,480 that's the rate of it because you have to record it at the spot rate remember when you record the currency you would record the sale at the spot rate the cash that you would receive is 1,485 why 1,485 because you bought that contract to sell the foreign currency at 1.485 so you debit the cash give them the foreign currency then you the liability remember that liability you said we have a debit so forward contract if you kept track of the balance you had a liability left of 5,000. Now you credit the liability to close that liability because you had a debit. Okay, the transaction has ended. And at the end, you have a $5,000 gain. Remember, you had a firm commitment, a credit balance. You debit the firm commitment to remove the firm commitment. I'm sorry, it has a credit balance. Yeah, you debit the credit balance, which is an asset credit balance, unusual. So you debit the firm commitment and you transfer the 5,000 to net income. Now, different companies might use different accounts, but I'm sure you got the idea. So the overall, you're gonna have a net income. You're gonna add 5,000 to your net income because you hedge your position using this forward contract. So once again, any gain on the forward contract will be offset by the loss on the firm commitment. As a result of the last entry, the, the, that $5,000, what happened is we received an additional $5,000. So we did receive 1,480, 1, supposed to be the spot rate, plus 5,000 adjustment to income from our contract. 
Okay, this is exactly to the cash received, 1,485,000. So the net gain from the whole forward contract is 5,000. We had a loss in year one of 10,783 because we did not wait because the forward contract went up and we signed early. Then in year two, the contract worked in our, in our favor. We had a gain of 15,783. So the difference between those is that additional $5,000 for hedging our position. So without the hedging contract, without the forward contract, not the hedging contract without hedging the position, we would have sold the million dollar at dollar forty eight and get only one million four hundred and eighty. By hedging, we got one million eight hundred and eighty five. Basically, the same. I'm using the same example using different instrument to hedge the position. And in this session, I used a forward contract.